Now I was on mute. There we go. So welcome, everyone, and welcome to those who uh, were have been with us uh, off and on. And a few of you were through the entire uh, summit that started at 10 o'clock in the morning and will end now shortly and a little bit at 2 o'clock this afternoon. It's a California-Portuguese-American Coalition Summit. This is our fourth uh, presentation today. Uh, we had one at 10, 11, 12, and this one. Uh, of course, we begin a little bit on Portuguese time starting at about 11 o'clock. We started on time, but... Uh, we're Portuguese and uh, we like to converse, obviously. And uh, so um, on uh, the uh, this last presentation, this last conversation is uh, with Filomena Pimentel Rocha, and I'll let her tell a little bit about herself, um, first generation born here in the United States, parents, immigrants, and uh, she is the, the California School Employees Association chapter president for the chapter that is the Tulare Joint Union High School District. And so um, I'll ask her to tell us a little bit about that chapter as well. So for the minute, if you can take just a, first of all, thank you so much for taking time. I know you're there at the district office. I can see, I remember that boardroom well. Uh, and so um, thank you for taking time to be with the California Portuguese American Coalition and PBBI. And uh, also um, thanks for uh, your service with the uh, CSEA at uh, Tulare Joint Union High School District. So a little bit about yourself and a little bit about what the chapter uh, is. Okay, so like you said, I am a first generation of Portuguese American. My parents immigrated from Tuseta. Um, I started working with this district five years ago and I became chapter president. This is my third year. Uh, as chapter president for the Tulare Joint Union High School District. It is the California School Employees Association. So it's all the employees that are opposite of your educators. So it's your bus drivers, your uh, custodians, your food service, your clerical staff. Um, so what our chapter does is, um, what I try to do is I try to meet with my members monthly and I meet with them. Um, we've been using, with well, since COVID, um, We've been using an app to communicate. And this year, I think most of my goal was to check on everybody's mental well being um, because they were our frontline workers and they were out in the communities working uh, with parents and students. So I was always checking on them to make sure they were okay. Um, but that's that. That's what I. Sure. <laughs> and, and <laughs> yeah. And uh, this is your third year. So, well, yes. first of all, let's let's uh, let's talk about that. One of the reasons why I wanted to to um, have a Filomena on is, uh, first of all, she's a bright young lady, but besides that, and uh, and a very big supporter of everything that's Portuguese in Tulare, but besides uh, that, Filomena is, um, it, it, we have um, lots of people involved in these different associations and unions. We have, you know, the California School Employees Association, we have the CTA, uh, mm -hmm. we have, of course, you know, firemen's and a, a fireman union and a, and a police union, a police association, union and a and carpenters even in, in the private industry you know folks that used to be with a with a, it's no longer but at one time uh people in the uh, dairyman's uh, cooperative creamery were unionized uh, with the uh, with yes and and so uh, there's um there's all kinds of unions involving especially in the public sector and we see that there's very little uh, Portuguese Americans in union leadership. And unfortunately, they're part of the union, they pay their dues. Um, some of them will go to meetings, some of them will not, but very, very few in uh, such a huge organization as CSEA and CTA and the Firemen's Association, the Nurses Association, et cetera, but very few in leadership. And Philomena is one of the few in the uh, CSEA leadership that's Portuguese. And so I wanted to have this conversation to maybe entice those who are part of a union somewhere in the state, whether it be private or public, to become a voice. We have to have more Portuguese Americans, not just in elected positions, but also in elected positions within their unions, within their associations, within their trade unions, etc. And so, Filomena, um, how did, uh, of course, when you became employed by the district, you became part of the CSEA, mm -hmm. and what took you, what, what drove you to what, uh, run what for? Yeah. What made, motivated me? Yeah. Um, seeing situations. Uh, so I work in payroll uh, here at the district office. So I had seen some situations with some members and heard situations that I didn't agree with. Um, didn't feel like it sat right, was not fair. And at that time, I had spoken to our chapter president at that time. And I had approached her about becoming a job steward. 
so a union store for our chapter because we only had one and one person to service over 260 employees. Um, so I did the crash, the four week course and did it over summer and became a, a union steward. So then I started being more involved in like disciplinary actions, not the world's greatest, but you know, it's to, to get in the door to understand more of our union. And I started training with how to do negotiations and I started doing bargaining agreements training. Um, and then at one time, someone approached me and said, we want you to be chapter president. So they nominated me and it was a, it was a hard decision because it, it's a job, it's voluntary. People need to understand it's voluntary. I'm not paid to do what I do, but you put in as many hours as doing this as you do as your normal job. And so I thought about it and, you know, I still had children in school. I, I'm going to school, but I did take it on because I did see, like you said, our voices needed to be heard. And, and so I felt like I had that courage to be the voice, to point out things, um, things that should be fair, that should be across the board, should be um, pointed out and recognized. So I, that's how I, I stepped in, but I started off as a union steward. And so, uh, indeed, because at um, the local chapter that you are president of, there is a, a good number of Portuguese Americans, uh, bus drivers, uh, TAs, are... um, mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking custodians, uh, yes. Portuguese Americans, uh, kitchen staff at the different cafeterias yes. are Portuguese Americans, uh, staff there that work in the district office. I think mm -hmm. you know, some colleagues were Portuguese Americans, but yet no one was taking leadership. No, and and what i found is they tend to be quiet they tend to keep everything bottled in and they just accept things as is but i'm trying to break that habit is no there's don't be quiet about it if you see you're wrong bring it up this is how we can fix it and bring it bring it to the light and so they're starting to you know point out things or they're starting to share concerns or things that they would like to see happen and so they're starting to build that. And a lot of them, like you said, a lot of them are male, um, male members and trying to even bring them along as a young female. It's, you know, a lot of them saw me growing up as a child. So it's like, there's that, you know, oh, I'm not going to listen or I don't want to pay attention, but now I've earned their respect. And so now they're participating and being active and, and giving me those ideas that we need to bring forth to to like either negotiations or to a board meeting and uh, as chapter presidents have you of course you've had the opportunity to um have a, a working relationship and uh, with other uh chapter presidents of csea so have you ever have you been able to go to before COVID, of course before the last uh prior to the last uh, 14 months have you been able to um have exchanges with other uh, union presidents from northern southern california etc and how yes. has that been beneficial to you so i do network with them and it is beneficial in, in several ways so um after my first year of presidency, we were having some issues and I had approached our board and I had a letter to the board and um, our members dressed in blue. And we actually had members from Farmersville and Exeter and city schools uh, show up to our board meeting to show support. And that's that means a lot because it's not just our small community. What happens here essentially affects the communities around us. So like in a year like this year, where we're all negotiating a new contract, we are communicating with other, other chapters to see what's being offered, what's worked, what's not worked, um, what's your take on this. And so when they need help, or if they have a board meeting, I will go to their board meeting as they have come to mind. Um, it's just that solidarity, that union, that, that, that connection to keep building, because it's not just one voice, it's all of our voices put together that's going to make an impact. Indeed. And so how many, What more or less, what's uh, the number of, of members of uh, CSEA at, the, uh, at your chapter? Uh, 263. Wow. So it's, uh, there's uh, probably, there's just as many teachers, I would think, or there's I, just about, about the yeah. same. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, how do, uh, this is going to be a tough question. How do, um, how do you feel uh, that sometimes the CSEA is treated a little bit different than CTA members? Um, or is it about the same? 
I would say in this particular district, I have noticed it's more pro CTA than CCA and is trying to decipher if that's the leadership that's being given by our board of members or if it's actually our administration. Um, because I have gone to other chapters in other districts and there's not that divide. Um, what's beneficial this year is that CTA has a new chapter, a chapter president, and he's also Portuguese American. And we've been able to communicate and work together. And so I think by showing that they that CTA and CCA can work together, I'm hoping what that shows to the district is there doesn't need to be a divide. We work together. And if our goal is to give the best education to the students of Tulare, then that's our top goal. And we have to work together. Kind of like our logo shows the three people, you know, holding together if you've seen our district logo. I, I visual that as that is your CTA, your CCA, and your administration working together to build this, this education system for the students in our, in our district. Yeah, uh, let people know, you know, sometimes people say, well, you know, uh, kids go to school and, you know, they, they see a teacher, uh, but, um, and the teacher teaches them, or <laughs> in case of high school teachers, you know, they have six teachers and they have, you know, six different teachers that teach them, you know, math and science and mm -hmm. Portuguese, right. whatever. Um, but, uh, you know, a child's education is a little bit more complex than just going to a classroom and taking notes and, you know, uh, you know, uh, and doing a test or two. Right. Um, there's contact sometimes that bus driver has the right contact or that or or the person at the uh, uh, in 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 the cafeteria that the student is afraid of going to get you know uh, some or yeah. or has some kind of a hindrance in getting food you know that is you know mm -hmm. free, free from the government you know programs or whatever so um how do you to the administration and to the community in general how do you sell you know for lack of sell. a better word you know how yeah. do you, how do you put forth the importance of this of the CSEA employee. So this year I was able to really hone that in. Um, when the pandemic hit, I received a phone call from our superintendent to meet on so March 13th, we shut down. Um, that was a Friday, the 13th. Saturday, the 14th was a board meeting. And then that Sunday we met with the superintendent and we came up with a plan. And and my e-board showed up that afternoon and we came up with a plan that was gonna make sure that our members were gonna be safe because we knew two things that had to still happen. We still had to get food to students. And so that meant all our food service staff had to be available. But we also know that there's students that don't live locally. So that means our drivers had to, they became essentially like Uber Eats. They drove meals out to other students. Um, sometimes the first person of the day a student sees is the bus driver. And depending how that bus driver's uh, interaction is, it's gonna set that child's mood for the whole day. Um, when we started bringing students back in October, it was actually our classroom aides that were in the classroom with the students and not actually the teachers. So our aides were assisting these students on how to get onto Zoom if they were struggling, gave extra supports, did extra tutoring. So they helped those students that, that needed the extra help. And so they had classes of, you know, 16 to 20 for an aide to work with. Um, but this year, it, it's it's kind of been easy to show just how important we are. There was a week where all our, our drivers were quarantined and um, we couldn't get students on campus. So they shut down for two weeks. And I'm like, that's the point I'm trying to tell you. We, we are important. We are a big part of this team. It's not just the educational part. A lot of our classified staff are coaches. They don't realize that. They're walk-on coaches and they coach a sport. And so um, it is a tough sell. I don't give up. I, I That's why I attend every board meeting to remind them that not only are we your employees, but we are parents of your students and we are community members of the city. So that's a noble, noble job and a noble cause uh, for you. Um, and I, and you, as you mentioned, it does take a lot of time, you know, and you have to be committed is that maybe one of the reasons that we don't see a lot more Portuguese Americans in union leadership because it is um, all volunteer and it takes a lot of time. Um, mm. Even from the CTA, they get, you know, a prep, but that's all they get. Um, and so um, 
do you do you think that uh, there maybe has to be some structure within the organization so we can have more people take leadership roles? It could be. It could be that. It could be. I'm thinking about the people in my chapter. A lot of them are just in that age group where they're thinking of retirement. Mm. And so trying to get the younger ones underneath us to start building that. And I think a lot of it is just they don't know where to start or how to start. Um, but I know CEC has a great leadership program because I, I went to their program and it was uh, up in San Jose and they break it down into simple terms. They don't overwhelm you. They're there to support you. Um, we have labor reps that we can contact at any time if we need us extra assistance. So if you're not ever alone, um, I think it's just, is that want, that, that, that fire in your belly to want to do this and knowing that they're, the reward at the end of the day is I may get a message from somebody saying, hey, thank you for checking in on us or thank you for attending the board meetings and letting them know that we're here. Those are, that's, that's, that's my reward. And that's, that's what drives me even more to continue. But I do think that there's, there's a, at least here in my chapter, there is this huge age difference where I know a lot of my staff is in that retirement age, but there's no one underneath. And a lot of the ones that are coming underneath, it's, it's, a stepping stone. So they're still trying to build within what they want to do. Do you, do you think so? Um, and, and that's as to end our conversation, what would you say? Uh, so to uh, these young uh, people and the, who are Portuguese Americans uh, who may be watching us, there may be other people, of course, watching the California Portuguese American coalition 2021 summit. They're not Portuguese American, but especially in our community, um, you know, uh, it is important to be in leadership and you never know what tomorrow is going to, 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 to be like. And so um, what would you say to young people that are getting hired uh, at a district somewhere, um, whether they be, they're being hired in any of these type of support positions, whether it be a secretary or a, a bus driver, a custodian, a kitchen, person, a kitchen uh, uh, helper, or a, a staff person in a cafeteria, what would you tell them um, uh, to what advice if they're thinking, you know, maybe I should be a little bit more involved in, in my association. Maybe I should be a little bit more in a leadership position in my union. Uh, maybe I don't want to be chapter president, but I want to be something else. You know, so what would you, right. what kind of pointers would you tell them that, you know, consider this and, uh, you know, consider these two or three things that you might want to try. And if it's for you, fine, keep on going. If it's not for you, it's not, but at least try, because that's part of the thing is sometimes mm -hmm. we don't try to get into leadership positions and we complain, you know, Portuguese Americans love to complain. Um, <laughs> we complain about everything in the world, but, um, but uh, you know, if we're in a leadership position that we can do something. So what would you tell young Portuguese Americans that have been hired support staff somewhere, whether they're in the Valley, Northern California, or Southern California? I would take that quote you said how we always complain <laughs> so I do use that I'm like you can't complain if you're not going to participate I mean even just coming to a chapter meeting giving your input that's all great information I mean um you know a lot of them want they're afraid like you said people are afraid of leadership we have site reps really a site rep is a form of them spreading information that I give to them hey there's a chapter meeting tonight come out to the chapter meeting very basic. I mean, it's not a big leadership role, but it's like getting your foot wet, right? Do I really want to engage in all this union work? Um, but I think they should be anybody in any union, like in like learn about your union. Obviously, unions were created for for fair wages, benefits, retirement. That's what unions. That's the history of what we learned. What a union is for. So learn the history. You know, talk to other other members. You know, if you're not work, if you're not, you know, it could be money, right? Some people you do have to pay chapter dues, you have to pay state union dues, but in the long run, you're really investing in yourself. You're really investing in yourself because you know that your voice will be heard. You can participate. You're going to be active. You are investing yourself amongst the other people you've chosen to represent you as a negotiator or you know, on an insurance committee, or you could do a scholarship committee. There's so many little committees that you can participate and be a part of, but not have to be in a leadership role. But if you enjoy that and it, you're like, hey, I could do this, 
then start pushing for a bigger role. You know, maybe go into becoming a union steward. That's like the next biggest step. And then from there, if you if it's still working out, then go into a leadership. You know, sometimes it needs, sometimes we need like a wake up, like a like a shake to, sure. to wake people up. And, and I think that's what happened with me. You know, I saw situations, it was not happy, went through the training and just fell in love with the training, kept going to different trainings. And then here I am in my third year. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for your service. Thank you for all you do. Thanks for being an awesome uh, high school mom. You were uh, <laughs> a, a sopish mom, a Society of Portuguese American Students yes. mom. And um, just really briefly, a couple of things. What, uh, what challenges do you do, do, do CSEA members have as, as uh, we transition from the COVID um, lockdown and all the issues to a more open, um, a more uh, and completely reopen here in yeah, the next you know, three, three months or so. So uh, what are some of the challenges that your members are going to be facing? Um, they're still a little, they're still a little worried, right? Um, but um, I did sit on the safety committee, the district safety committee, and we do have a great PPE plan. We have a COVID plan. It's very precise. They, and that's what I, I like is that in that aspect, they do, I take their thoughts and their concerns with me. So like this person's concerned about masks and this person's concerned about lighting or, so I'm able to bring that. Um, I think everybody really is excited to see their students at a full-time level. A lot of them have worried because they know that sometimes for some of our students, school is their safe haven. It's it's where they are comfortable and it's where they were, you know, fed or taken care of. So a lot of our staff is just super excited to see all these kids back. They really miss these students. They really miss, you know, taking them on the bus, serving them meals. Um, I think they're really looking forward to, to it. So, like I said, some of them are hesitant still about, um, you know, having to wear the PPE. Mm -hmm. But um, I think the biggest challenge, if you were to ask anybody right now, is the fact that we're in the middle of negotiations. Sure. That's always a tough time. It's always a tough time. But there's money in education. So, you know, stick there up. Is. Stick up for, for, for your beliefs. We have to. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Philomena. I appreciate uh, I appreciate and appreciate you waiting around. We were a little bit late, about 12 minutes or so, but uh, thank you so You're much. Good. Best of luck to you. And hopefully uh, you will uh, continue your leadership in C uh, CSEA uh, and who knows, even beyond the chapter. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank appreciate you. it. And thank you for uh, your uh, inf bits of information that are very, very important to future leaders. Appreciate it. Thank you for your service. And that was uh, Filomena uh, Pimentel Hosha. Uh, and uh, from Filomena, we are going to, as we promised, and uh, of course, this uh, four hour session of the uh, California Portuguese American Coalition uh, Summit 2021, with the presence of the uh, uh, Honorable Consul General of Portugal in uh, San Francisco, uh, Maria João Lopes Cardoso. Uh, we're going to bring her on as a uh, panelist as well. And so once she is on, then uh, we'll hope to, again, the same thing, we might have to change some things before because of the, um, of the issue we are having a little bit with the uh, um, with the video, but we're hoping to bring uh, Dr. Maria João Lopes Cardoso on. There she is, right there, and uh, to uh, to have her in uh, with uh, on behalf of Portugal and on behalf of herself, and of course the uh, the uh, Consul General of Portugal in San Francisco, uh, bringing in some close closing remarks to the last four hours. She's been accompanying the whole entire uh, session since the beginning, um, and so. Um, Thank you so much, first and foremost, for being here. Thank you for accompanying the entire event. It's a lot more fun when it's in person, as you know, when the prime minister was here uh, two years ago. But hopefully next year we'll have it in person. So, uh, again, thank you so much. And uh, the last word is yours. Thank you, Dinesh. Uh, it was uh, live in 2018 with the prime minister and then 2019 as well. Correct. We had it, right? still, we had it with, with Palkus. That's right. Yes, because yes. we uh, we moved it to October. I always forget that because we moved, we, we had the, the resolution, but then we also moved the, the, uh, the, the resolution was still on and we still had a little reception, but then we moved the, uh, 
the summit itself to October. Yes. Yes. So, so as you see, I'm very eager to participate, and I'd like to thank CPAC for all the work that uh, you have done, and you're uh, you're very active in all fields, as we know. So, I think that the CPAC has played a really important role in giving visibility to the Portuguese community in California, but even more so by motivating the Portuguese Americans to get involved in their communities and to decide to run for office. There has been a change, the numbers are increasing, and that's very much due to the incredible work that you uh, are doing. And, and as you've mentioned, uh, tomorrow, and once again, we have the resolutions, both of, both of them on the day of Portugal on the Portuguese Heritage Month, and uh, they will be introduced and voted, as you say, unanimous, unanimously <laughs> uh, at the Assembly and the Senate in Sacramento. And, and that we, we have to admit, and I'm very grateful for this, it's the CPAC's advoc due to the CPAC advocacy efforts. Um, I, I like CPAC to be uh, in the limelight, so I really, uh, because I think that's the way for the um, California legislators uh, and for them to understand that we exist as a community and that we vote and that we are active. And so um, I know that you are trying to recreate the Portuguese caucus in Sacramento again. Uh, and we, we're really looking forward to something like that. I mean, that would be really wonderful. I think we are on the right track for that as well. And, and then, you know, at last, I, I agree that to be a good Portuguese is to be a good American, uh, that is to vote and to have an active life in society, eventually in politics. So, you know, to make your Portuguese American or Portuguese and American, voice heard is really, really important. And that is, you know, fight for your rights, fight, the, fight for the future of your children. And, and that's the beauty of democracy. And, uh, and that's the beauty of America and the beauty of, Portu beauty of Portugal as well. So I'm very supportive. I really, truly enjoy your events. And so um, I just have to thank you for all this. And as you know, you can always count on me whenever you need UC Pat need to use me. You use me. You take the you take the consul general with you wherever you go, and uh, I'll be very pleased uh, to be present. Uh, there is this um, there's a visit being organized by uh, Californian um, um, environment and economics. Yes, 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 yes. You yes, know yes. about that. Yes, going to, to taking a group of, of legislators to Portugal. Yes, taking that group of legislators to. And I think they're going to. Uh, originally, they were going to go to Madeira. Also, I don't know if that, that still probably is. will go to Madeira as well. So they mix uh, work with pleasure, which makes sense, and then you now it's more motivating for everybody. So uh, they have also invited me to go to Sacramento to talk to them and then we, we, we are going to host, they're going to host this time, the Toast to America uh, in, in, at the end of June in Sacramento. So things are moving and it's very important that uh, uh, people you know, in Sacramento hear about Portugal and, uh, and that's you know, also, um, we, we are partners in this and CPAC is very important. And as you know, uh, both the governor and the lieutenant governor are very aware of the presence of, of, of the Portuguese community and, and of your activity because what, I'm always greeted. I mean, I, I don't even bring up the subject and they bring up the subject themselves of how important the Portuguese community is in California. And so big, big respect for you um, all the time, which makes me very proud, but which I know it's natural. That's what I expect. Uh, from everybody to love and respect the Portuguese community uh, because you know you're worth it. So and thank you again. Thank oh. you, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Yeah. And it was very nice to see, as you uh, as you saw throughout the day, uh, some folks uh, with lots of knowledge. I mean, I was really impressed with all the different folks from Lee Nevis to the elected official panel to Maggie and John, and of course now Filomena. And it's so important as to have Portuguese Americans be participative in wherever they are, even if they're just, even not just, if, if they're in a union, uh, you know, somewhere, uh, Carpenters of America Union or the Plumbers of America Union, why not be, if you're already a union member, 
why not be the union leader? Why not, you know, take leadership because that gives the community the voice that we need, correct? Yes, yes, and all fields of society, right. yes, because, you know, yeah. that's where we live, it's the society, and we make the world, so, and we make the, the future world, so we cannot just look at our devices and forget that there's a life outside, so we have to be active and do things. Indeed. Well, thank you so much, Council General. Thank, thank you for you. supporting thank CPAC. You. We'll see you tomorrow morning. We'll be yes. live, live broadcasting it, hopefully with uh, quite a few of our board members as well. And, we'll, and uh, we hope to have everybody present uh, in the community as well. Thank you again. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. Bye. And thank, thank you all. Thank you all Bye. for attending. Uh, and Bye. that was the California Portuguese American Coalition uh, Summit for 2021. Take care. We'll see you tomorrow morning uh, with the live resolution. Take care, everyone.